more and more competitive. It gets a bit harder and harder to find it. So don't worry about the time or any of that sort of stuff. We'll we'll get it all out. Obviously, I mentioned that I thought Alaho could be coming here or should be coming here. I I still look at it now and there's I could probably make a strong enough case for probably ten horses in this race that average Joe off the street would follow me on any one of them. So how do you see it? Can you whittle it down to only less than ten? <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I'm not far off. <laughs> um, the ones that I've looked at, um, Easy Game, uh, Fakir Dudery, Melon, Reserve Tank, Mr. Fisher, Sam Crow, uh, even Halaho if he does come here. Yeah. Um, this is one of the hardest races I've seen at Cheltenham Festival in a few years, to be honest. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. And it's so hard as well with all the ones you have even mentioned there to try and even talk about any of them being good value because yeah most most of them are single figures aren't they yeah it's there is there is one that i don't i don't know if she's gonna run in the race but um salsaretta oh yeah do you know what she, she's entered in this she's entered in the rsa and there's uh, i can't remember it is it might be limerick or something like that but there's a mayor's novice chase that willie mullins it's on the same week he's talking yeah. about running her there and not bringing her over but oh. i when she won a not the last race on her penultimate start. Yeah. Before she won that, I backed her non one no bet for the JLT and RSA. I think that she was only, well, I'll say only, I think she was about 40s or 50s. But yeah, she'd be seriously interesting if she came here, wouldn't she? Yeah, especially with the uh, the 11s as well. And Shat had loved it, didn't she? She came over and she won it, didn't she? They, yeah, she one, another one at a bigger price, which he's a, he's a, I mean, he's a pants price now in theory with it. Is that Saint Sonnet of Paul Nichols? Did you see that one's debut? Oh yeah, I've seen that performance. Yeah, because he said in his preview night, uh, I think it was like a couple of nights before that this it was a hundred to one at that time, and he said this won't be a hundred to one after it wins at Fake and wherever it was on the Tuesday. Yeah, I I was like a little bit underwhelmed because I thought, given the bullish comments there, that it might win a bit better. But that's one that's been supported a bit more and more now. So I suppose that could be interesting at a price. It just it looks a bit of a minefield, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a it's really difficult race. I mean, Re- reserve tank's got the form in the book to win this, but he's, he's jumping to it's an issue, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't look a natural chase at the minute, but we can forgive him that sort of stuff because he improved for the spring last year, didn't he? So he yeah. could he could come good here. He could come good at Aintree. He did the treble, didn't he? Or did he did he win? Oh no, he didn't uh, win the treble last year, did he? So yeah, he won at Aintree and Punchdown, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That and good, and uh, he's. Easy game as well. Do you, do you think he'll go for for this race, or do you think he'll go? They'll go RSA with him. I'm not 100 percent sure. I thought his performance behind four in was good enough to suggest that he could be competitive in this race. I'd like to see him here. But again, there's so Willie Mullins has got five or six that he potentially could run in here because he's saying Menon's going to come here, and then it's yeah. there's only probably Alaho that he's going to step up for the RSA. So yeah, you would wonder who he's going to change in trip, wouldn't you? But again, yeah. that's the problem with easy game as well. I think he's Ten to one top price, but that's not one non one and no bet, and he's like seven or eight to one non one and no bet. You just you don't even know if he's going to run, do we? I oh, know it's written but, for mind mind at, least, at, minute. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's good to know though, because like I say, respect your opinion and the fact that you're as you're sort of struggling to win it down as well just makes me realise I'm not missing something obvious because I have done that before in certain races, especially the middle distance ones, the Ryanair, the JLT, because you tend to get the horses that don't stay three miles or can't win it two miles coming in here. Sometimes I don't give it the attention that it deserves, but ah well. We will now move on to the Potemps. Your man that we put up in the seven, they've made a mistake, haven't they, with Roman Pump? They're running him in the stairs. It's the biggest mistake we've seen. It's for this Cheltenham. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I know he's top weight and the big mark and all that sort of stuff, but I suppose they're probably looking at it thinking that if he's capable of running a big race in the Potemps, that he'll probably be able to finish top four in the stairs hurdle. He ain't going to win it. He would have had a chance in there, but never mind. Let's not cry over spilt milk. We never know. They might still change their minds, mightn't they? What do you fancy in this? Uh, well, I've narrowed this down to a small shortlist. Um, the first one being Relegate. Oh, go. go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he won the champion bump for in 2018 really well. Yeah. Uh, did show a good form with William Mullins. Um, returned from a, a big absence to finish uh, fourth last time. Um, that would have gave him a good blowout. Uh, 
the handicap is probably up seven pounds to one three seven for that. Um, but I do think he'll relish every yard of the three miles uh, at the track. Um, and he'll probably carry a low weight as well. If he gets into the final declarations, then he's, he's probably going to run pretty well. But um, one I do like at a really big price is Guitar Pete. Oh, no, surely not. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's extremely well handicapped out of Redles. Um, he's five pound lower than last time when he was sixth in a qualifier. Um, he's rated much higher over fences. He loves it around Cheltenham. He, yeah. he, was, he was third in the, in the 2014 Triumph Hurdle. He won the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup off just one pound lower mark back in 2018. He was placed in the in the um, uh, the Bet Victor Gold Cup off 137. I, I think he, he's been primed for this race by connections. Um, I think this uh, was his only entry as well. For this yeah, race. yeah, it is his only entry now. Yeah, is he, he again? This so this is the beauty of talking it through with other people. So Renegade. She's one of those that last year she was tipped up for the Albert Bartlett. She stays on. I agreed with, me and Jamie talked about this last night as well. I just feel like she just stays on behind beating horses. But yeah. I, whether she's got an attitude problem or she just, just doesn't jump well enough, but she definitely has got a chance in the attempts. I've marked her card a long time ago, so it's not really fair doing these sort of previews when it's me talking about her because she's never going to get the like the... The, the sort of talk of her, about her like she deserves. So you are right. She, I mean, she she has got a bit of a chance. Guitar Pete's a great shout. So it was, yeah, 2017 when it when he, cause he beat Clanders Oboe. Yeah, that that was unfortunately that was the day that Star Architect for the Rooney broke down in front. So you know whether he would have won it or not that day is debatable. But like you say, his form after that's fairly decent, isn't it? Interesting, obviously that yeah they gave him that spin over hurdle, didn't they? They managed to get him in, dropped five pounds for it. I mean, again, they'd be worth big price shouts on that, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think he's definitely worth a chance. I mean, they could have put him over fences again, but they obviously are quite keen on running him in this race. So I think he, I think he'll run a, a lot better than his odds suggest, anyway. Yes, yeah, so you can get forty to one non-one and no bet best odds guaranteed with Bet Three Six Five. And let's be honest, twenty-eight races across the festival. You're probably going to be might have to wait a couple of years to get a 40 to one point, but you, you'll get a run for your money with guitar Pete, that's for sure. Nice. Yeah. See, do you know what? I, again, I get to this point because I've been going through the races so much, not so much with the handicaps, but I go through the races so much, I actually end up getting a bit lazy with odds checker. I just get down to a certain point. I think oh, I've scrolled through enough. That's why it's good to speak to you, mate. So, oh, <laughs> 40 to one winner in the potential we've just nailed. Ryanair Chase. Now, this was one of your seven that you did put up. We talked about Min. I know he was the shortest price of all your selectors you put up, but it was value then. Still looks like he's got a massive chance. I've had a bit of a U-turn on Min. I feel like I've turned a corner with him. I feel like he's a bad, like a bad ex-girlfriend that I've finally seen the light. <laughs> I've left her for dust. And I've been answering her texts and her calls for years. I've been been playing playing her game all this time, but I finally decided enough is enough. <laughs> I've washed my hands of him, but he definitely comes in here with a chance. Is he still your number one fancy for the Ryanair? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I just nothing, nothing will put me off Min for this race. Um, I know I backed to Plutard when he was so impressive at this meeting last year. Yeah. But um, th- this has got to be Min, Min's year. I mean, the, the door's wide open for him without Altior not being not in his way. Um, his form over two miles plus is real top class form. <clears throat> um, the race is perfect for him. William Mullins has got a really good record in the race as well. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't just pass me. Yeah, I don't blame you, mate. And to be honest with you, this is, again, we've mentioned it in other races, but I'd pitch this as a three-horse race. Froden had excuses those first two runners, didn't he? Basically ran in a bumper. Then they got the tactics wrong at Haydock. Won nicely after that. Been kept fresh for this. And a Plutard, like you say, you backed him last year. We all saw what he did last year. He's still so young, though, that it doesn't matter if he doesn't win this time round. He's got time, isn't he? But I, I'd make it between them three. I think Riders on the Storm had too much of a hard race the last day. And I've still got him pinned as just a glorified handicapper. So, on to the stairs hurdle. This was another one of your seven. You put him up before... It was before the... Um, uh, the middle distance one, the real kill. Real kill, yeah. So you put him up when he was the each way value. Cracking shouts. So you've already nailed that. Is there anything else you've decided might be worth a go? Or are you happy with that one? Uh, I, I am 
pretty happy with some of your boys. Although I would like to give a mention to Emmett Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he ran, he ran absolutely dreadful at Cheltenham a couple of runs ago, but clearly needed the run. And then he bounced back to form last time. Um, I know connections know what it takes to win this race. Well, because uh, Col- they had Cole Harden. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, Warren Gray checks up, holds uh, Emmett on in really high regard. So uh, I think I think he could uh, run well, but I think if if, there, if there's any horse in this race that that's going to trouble Paisley Park, then it's got to be Somerville boy. Yeah, and I, I have to agree. Of the two, this see, this would be the sort of thing that would interest me more, not for reasonable stakes, but just for interest more than anything. They're about the same sort of price. I'd rather be back in some of your boy in a match bet than Emma Tom. Yeah. And that, that's the way that I sort of look at it. And Warren Great Rex did say for the real kill that he, he hadn't trained him fully, he hadn't worked him hard enough, all that sort of stuff. But he was so far beaten round the course. I know. It, it, yeah, it would worry me about him. Some of your boy, you, you made the correct shout of him there. That was the time to be getting on him. But P- Paisley just wins, doesn't it? Yeah, he, he's very similar to Big Books, isn't he? He just keeps on finding a way to win. Yeah, yeah he could be like 50 lengths behind you and he'd probably still find a way to win. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth with him. And I, I mentioned this on the Colossus preview night, which if anyone watches that, they'll get to see it. But I will mention it again. I got a little bit, not laughed at, but it got played down a little bit at that preview night. The only thing with Paisley Park, and it's like easy to say of any horse, but Paisley Park's jumping was a little bit suspect in his younger days. He doesn't, he doesn't jump the last hurdle as well as he might jump some of the other ones. And now he, he has put a couple of decent jumps in there. But... It's a short running from the final flight to the finish line. I know it's Paisley Park and he's quick and all that sort of stuff, but I don't know. If someone manages to nick a couple of lengths out of him or they can't get him quite close enough and he did make a hash of the last, yeah, it, that, that would be the only way I could see him beat. But that, I mean, I'm talking about very fine margins and it would be a very specific instance of something happening to him, but I'm all aboard Paisley. So when I mentioned earlier about Benny Dejou was 5-1 to one for the Mayors after it last year, Paisley Park was 5-1 to one for the Stayers after winning it last year. That's insane. <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually disgusting to look back and think of it. And you can boost with William or you get an extra half a point. So I've got a reasonable sum on Paisley Park at 11 to 2 as well. So just winning at life, and I? That's it. <laughs> Keep in, on in, winning. Until I talk about their jumping frailties and they both come down at the last. <laughs> so the stable play. Um, this is a race where I did look back through my books and I've actually had a couple of winners in here, but I've never... Hadn't well, I say never. Last year I had an anti-post bet and it didn't even run. I very rarely have an anti-post bet in the stable plate. I tend to leave it because you get a few from the novice handicap, like we mentioned with that Sensualano that might not go there and then might come here. Different ground, different course. Is there anyone in here you've got your eye on? Um, I wouldn't say I have a strong opinion on, on this race at, at this moment, but if, if Shattered Love turns up in this race, then then surely she she's got to have some some kind of chance. Um, yeah. I, I thought that as well, but the last I heard from Gore, well, I didn't hear it. He put it in his press release. I think they're going Ryanair with her. Oh, that's, that's a little disappointing, but... <laughs> it is, isn't it? I think, because, like, I run by and Chris's ring was good, wasn't it? I just wonder whether, like, when it comes to the handicaps and the mares, obviously they're running off their official rate and they don't get their mares allowance, do they? I wonder whether that's playing a part in it. I don't know, but, yeah, she was one I looked at. Anything else you got on your radar, or should we skip it? Um, a quick mention to Clondor Castle. Oh yeah, go on. Yeah, um, it disappoints near a couple of runs ago, but bounced back to win nicely at Warwick last time. Um, I think he's up six pounds for that win, but he's a, he's a good horse on his day. Um, he's a fair four in last year's article, and I think he's going to sh- show up better than he did here two runs ago. And, I would lo- I, to be honest, I'd like to see Paddy Brennan ride him again because I thought he gave him a, a lovely ride at um, Warwick. But, um, yeah, I, I think that's, he's got a good each way chance. Yeah, I agree. The only slight negative I have with him um, was his two runs on the new course. So, Trials Day 2018, he was battered by Remy Luck that won a handicap. I think, that, I think he was a big prize. And then that run we were talking about there in December meeting behind Warthog, he was battered then as well, whereas he's, he ran at Cheltenham in the arc, well, that was on the old course, and that race fell apart a little bit, didn't he? So I slightly worry about his course form, specifically on this particular course, but if you're happy to forgive him that, which maybe I'm being critical, he'd have a chance. Yeet. So that's another handicap nailed. 
But yeah, I'll be waiting till near the day. The beauty thing as well, well, we're 55 minutes in, so no one's listening now. But if anyone's still listening now, we, me and uh, Stephen are doing Cheltenham write-ups for the four days. So we're going to have place pulls up for Colossus, wind pulls up as well. So races like this where we're whittling it down, they're not necessarily our final selections now. So we will still find the winners. Don't worry about it. Um, the second last race, the penultimate race, if you will, on the Thursday, is the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. I spoke about this last night with Jamie, so I mean, I've pretty much said what I want to say in it. I think Manella Melody is the one to beat the form. Lamar Christ comes in here without having to carry any sort of a penalty, so I don't know why people were crabbing her last one so much. I think it's between the two of them, but I would still favour Manella Melody, even though she's got to give weight away. What do you think? I think Manella Melody is a worthy favourite for this. Um, she is a really good form for us. She's three from three out of hurdles, including a list of in grade three wins. Um, really like her attitude, the jumping, the way she travels. It would take a really good mare to beat her. I, I just think I think she's rock solid and is the, the most likely winner of this. Um, yeah. But uh, another one I do like, and I really hope she runs in this race, because I think two miles is perfect for this one, is uh, Concertista. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, worth a chance at a big price if she comes here. Um, she almost won the Grade 2 Mayor's Race last year on a, a stable uh, debut for Willie Mullins when beating just a short head. Yeah. Um, she travelled so well that day. Um, it, I thought she was really unlucky because she did get shorter room at a crucial stage as well, which probably cost her the race. Um, I know she didn't win her next couple of starts, but she ran a good race to finish third in a handicap at left turn last time. Over a, a, a bit of a longer distance. Where again, she did look the winner, but she just got fanned out towards the back end of the race. Yeah. Two, two miles is her trip, and I think she's de- she's definitely a mare uh, worth following. And I think she wants to keep an eye on her if she turns up in this race or elsewhere at the festival. Well, that's it, yeah. So not only has she got course and distance form, she's got course and distance form in the race, isn't she? She'd only beaten her head last year. I think yeah. it's, it'd be worth mentioning, just when I mentioned about the five pounds for Nella Melody, you you touched on it correctly there. It was a grade three win it, so I think she'd only have to carry a three pound penalty. So that makes her even more fanciful, doesn't it? We'll move on to the Kim Muir. So we mentioned Ravenhill a little bit earlier. He's been nibbled in for this. I think Gordon Elliott even put him up as a charity bet for this. So there was obviously the sad demise that Glenn Lowe's not going to come here. This is now the other one for Gordon Elliott. He tips up Ravenhill every time it runs. So sure, it'll win at some point, but not for me. Who do you like in here, mate? Uh, I like Gordon Elliott's other horse. It's uh, uh, Sheb de Cavigny. Um he, he showed really smart, consistent... Uh, form in France. And I just find it really interesting that why would Gordon Elliott uh, buy him as a 10-year-old? Mm. Um, I can only say that as he's obviously had this kind of race in mind or possibly something else, but he's placed on all three starts for this yard this, yard this year. Um, he ran a good race to finish third in the Grand National Trial last time over three and a half, four furlongs. Um, I dropped back to um, the shorter distance will suit and I think he's only going to pull up three pounds as well um, so that one's probably been letting quite lightly and it, that, it could be the surprise package yeah it definitely could be he's quite I think he's quite low rated isn't he 120s so I don't know what, how he'll feature about getting in and I know that he's another one that's got entries entered Sunday and then he's also entered yeah. in the Midlands Grand National as well so possibly them getting him entered up at Cheltenham to see the mark for the grip Grand National Midlands thing on the Saturday. Be, yeah. I think it'll be definitely worth following him at where everyone's coming up soon. Like you say, they're not going to be purchasing a horse at that age for no reason, are they? I know. See, I just find that like really interesting. <laughs> Yoot. So, we're going to skim through Friday. I have got my phone on charge, but uh, it's getting low. Is we're it? an hour in and we've got Friday to smash out. So, without further ado... We'll just smash out Friday. So the Triumph Hurdle, again, is another one that I've waffled on about plenty of times. It's a really interesting race this year. How do you see it? Um, I, 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 to be honest, between All Mankind and Goshen, I'd favour All Mankind. Um, I think he's got a st- much stronger form. But I really, really fancy Aspire Tower for this, though. Go on. Yeah. Um, bolted up on his first two starts. Well, a combination. I think it was 31 lengths. Uh, although he fell the last hurdle when challenged last time, um, 
he was put, he was finding loads for, for pressure, and he looked to be putting away slightly when uh, coming to grief. I, I, to be honest, I think he just become a bit lazy and was dossing in front. Um, and then and then when he got challenged, he thought, oh, I'm in a bit of a fight here, and then probably panicked a little bit. But this horse, he he's got some engine, I think. Mm. Um, he doesn't have to lead this race. If um, all mankind are gosh, gushing off at like a steam train, it's going to set it up for uh, Aspire Tail. I, I, I really fancy him for this race. Yeah, I think that's fair. And it's again, it's a bit like the Abracadabra thing in the Supreme. He's one of those horses that's sort of fallen by the wayside. Not many people are talking about him now, but he does deserve it. He'll definitely be better off a lead as well. So, yeah, I think it looks wide open. I think it looks a really good race. Well, there'll, be, there'll be a few good horses that come out of that, I think. Yeah, definitely. So the next race is the County Handicap Hurdle. You do get some high-class winners of this race and you get some high-class runners-up. Another one where there's been lots of mentions from different yards about different horses, all those bits and pieces, but who do you like in here? Um, the, there's, a, there's a three that I've picked out. Um, one, one's Black Bow, William yeah. Mullins. Um, I really hope they're good for this race with him instead of the Supreme. I think he, he'd have a massive chance. Um, I remember when Patrick Mullins said that he was one of uh, Willie Mullins' best horses in the in the yard when he was uh, a yeah. running bumpers. <clears throat> he normally travels quite keenly, so this bigger field will definitely help him settle. Yeah, uh, I think he's he's on a mark of one four one. He's carrying ten stone eleven, so I think he could go quite well. Yeah. Um, also embittered, who went into handicap company the last time, uh, finished sixth of twenty two. That was off a mark one forty. Um, he's been put up six pounds for that, but he did get um, hampered, uh, well, sandwiched late on, and he lost quite a bit of momentum, and he still wasn't beaten that far. Yeah. And then um, there's John Quinn doesn't really send many to the Challenge Festival, but he's only got one entry this year, and it's Ashington. Um, he was rated 90 on the flat. He's run five times over hurdles, won twice, placed three times. Um Really consistent. I think he'd be carrying nine stone ten, which is quite light. I'm not sure if he, if he's going to get in though, but um, he, he would have a chance if he turned up. Yeah, twenty five <laughs> twenty is not one and no bet. And I think all three of those that you've mentioned, looking at the exchange prices, you'd fancy that they're all going to come here as well. So again, it's one of those bigger prices you could afford to get a little block bet in there. Plenty of competitive racing on the Friday. None more so probably than the Albert Bartlett, the last of the three novice hurdles. I said, I mean, I, I love saying it over and over again. It's a race I do quite well in, even though we do get some big price winners in there. I'm really intrigued to know how you've seen it at the moment, mate. What, the ones you've got on your radar? Um, the, the top of my radar at the moment has got to be um, latest exhibition. Um, he, he's, he's going to be really hard to beat. Yeah. Um, he seems to have all the attributes uh, for this kind of race. He's, I mean, he's a really tough horse. Won three of his four starts over hurdles. Um, he's go he's going to relish the Cheltenham Hill. Yeah, I'm finding it hard for anything else to beat him. But um, I would like to see Noel Mead Dial Kerr running this race. Agreed. Um, it, that one's improved with each run. Got off the mark in it when he absolutely slammed Monkfish. Um, say so that the uh, Monkfish has won since. Um. But I think Dial Kerr being fair and square, um, I think the longer distance uh, will unlock further improvements. And he looks a typical Naomi, tough horse, and he could surprise a few. If yeah, definitely. Him. So the casual man that you mentioned for the Coral Cup before, obviously he's not going there. He's going to come to the Albert Bartlett. Wasn't disgraced behind Time Hill. He's available at 50 to 1 with Bet365, non one and no bet. We know it throws up big price winners. Please tell me you're going to have a fiver on at least. I'll, I'll probably have a few pounds on him, yeah. <laughs> I've he's got big, it, haven't I? <laughs> big, big, big price, isn't he? 50 to 1 seems... I mean, I'm not saying he should be like an even money shot, but he should probably be a 20 to 1 poke, 25 to 1 poke. 50 to 1 is not a bad price, I wouldn't say. Yeah, that, that, I think that's a bit of an insult. <laughs> Agreed. So, yeah, it, it's one of them that it does open up nearer the time, but, yeah, it's it's a race I love. And it's nice to see... You get, we always get some good horses out of it. Manella Rinder, obviously, last year. Alaho, we talked about them too as two of the three in the clash of the RSA. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And this year's renewal probably looks a bit 
more of a high class affair than some other years, I think, as well. So that's even more exciting. But it's now on to the main event of the Friday, the main event of Cheltenham. It is the Cheltenham Gold Cup. I have got this completely and utterly sewn up now. I've, I've got the winner, I've got the forecast, and I actually think I might have a cheeky tricast as well. But before I unveil all, what do you think? Well, I've picked out three for this as well. So. Oh, go on. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with uh, Santini. Um, he's, he's in the three. Yeah. Um, my other one will be uh, Album Photo. He's in the three. Um, the third one's going to be Monolith. Oh, doesn't stand. <laughs> oh, it was going so well. Now go on, you you sell me Monolith. No, you don't have to sell me Monolith. You've got the other two. Yeah, why do you think Monolith will stay? Um, to be honest, I, I thought when when I watched his performance last time, um, when Delta were come and ching ching him late on, I did notice that uh, Rachel Blackmore. Blackmore did lo- lose her eyes in the closing stage, but once Delta work got past him, I, I, I just had this vision that he was he was coming back. Yeah. Was, um. I, I I really do believe that he'll be better suited to to this longer trip. I, I know presenting first he ran away with the RSA when he when he beat him, but yeah. I think that was just a. Uh, I think that was a flash in the pan for pre- presenting Percy, to be well, honest. Yeah, and Album Photo was falling when he was well beaten in third as well, and we've come out and proved that he stays. And you know what? Monolith's one of those horses that Henry de Bromhead's always said that he stays, always said that he stays, yeah. and I've just never bought into it. He's, he's actually making me get to the point where I'm worried now that you've mentioned him in your three because he's a 25 to 1 poke. <sighs> I mean, he's kept him uh, fresh as well. He's had a lot of preparation. I mean, Emery de Bromham has been really patient with him this season, so this is this has been his target for for some time. For, for oh, you know, I can just I can just say he's going to go off sixteens or fourteens on the day, and he. Yeah. I'm going to end up having to have a muggy tenner or a score on it. I'm probably better to get it in now. All right, well, thank you for that. Anyway, the what my old my my uh, straight tricast for you, by the way. Anyway, album photo wins. Yeah, Santini the boat comes second. Clan des Obo gets third. Oh yeah, it was. It would have been Native River that got second, and Santini would have been third. But he's not it. I yeah, I think Clan des Obo gets a real hard time of it, given out the fact that he's won back to back King Georges. He wasn't that bad last year. Tactically, they're going to ride him differently. They've kept him fresher. There's a lot to like about Clan des Obo, and it wasn't like it wasn't dissimilar this time last year that he was vying for favoritism. And if and if anything, he's coming into this this season probably with a more likeable campaign I reckon mm. Santa has got a squeak but do you know what fine fine I'll have some money on Monolith well, Paul, Paul Nichols did say he seems he's pretty adamant that Clanders are going to stay yeah and I think look, he's, he's run well enough there. we mentioned Guitar Pete before didn't we when he won that race that was, I mean it's two mile four but Clanders Obo was a, I think a five year old at that age and he was giving him like a stone and, and, and only a couple of a couple of legs behind it so yeah I've you, I mean, you don't win King George's if you don't stay, so... Yeah, that's it. But it's, again, it's one of those races, it's quite competitive. You could end up talking about quite a few, couldn't you? Yeah, do, do you think he'd... I mean, he probably would stay, but do you think he's a, a horse like one man? Because he won, didn't, he won the King George comfortably, and then he went to Charlton, and he, he bombed out in the last like couple of furlongs, didn't he? That's it, yeah. I think, did, did he did he go back and win a champion chase? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Don't know if Clanders over a winning championship. You know, you, it wouldn't put me off. It'd be definitely a quick horse, wouldn't he? Yeah. I just think it, it'd be the defining point for him this year. Isn't it? They're going to be riding him slightly differently. We'll see how he gets on. I feel like last year I don't really do sectionals or any of that sort of stuff, but because so many horses were like almost felt like they were on top of each other, I feel like yeah, last year was probably run quite slow. So I'm hoping some like something like Kenboy will just go and fly off in front, and there'll be a quicker yeah. pace, which I think would suit someone like Clanders over. It, it's going to be a fascinating race, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, if he doesn't win the Gold Cup, we're backing him for the Champion Chase next year, then. <laughs> That's it, then. you probably get, what, 100 to 1? <laughs> Easy, yeah, and the rest. But, so we've come from Clanders Obo potentially being a Gold Cup horse, if not winning the Champion Chase, to the <laughs> Fox Hunters. That's a fall from Graves, isn't it? Not a race I'm particularly interested in. I backed Salsify when Jane Mangan fell off of Oscar Delta in front and that was the luckiest winner I'll ever get in my life so <laughs> since then I've sort of steered away from it I, I, I can't can't do that to someone else again anything you like in here? 
Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple, and I really do think one of these two is going to win this race. Okay, mate, no. Um, starting with Staker Wallace. Yes. Um, I mean, Ender Bowles is no stranger to success in this, having trained on the fringe to win it twice. Um, I think he's got an outstanding chance. I mean, yeah. under rules, he's only run, what, four times in five years? Um Look, back in 2017, he made his under chase debut at Lepis Town on just his third start. And he, he finished a really good third behind on the fringe and Fox Rock with yeah. uh, Salsify back and forth. I mean, them three were the, were the best Irish under chasers at that time. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't seen for three years under rules after that before returning to finish second behind Bill away last time. But that one had race fitness. Yeah. Um, and then Staker Wallace went for a point to point last time out and won nicely, which sort of put him spot on for the race. Um, you don't often see Ender Bolger keep a hold on to a horse for so long. He's had just that few runs in so many years. I mean, that's it. Yeah, he did say that he's he's been difficult to keep sound, but he did say that he is sound now. So you can still get eight to one with Bet Three Six Five, non one and no bet. Their top prize, best odds guaranteed. This is the sort of horse that will be smashed into favourite for the Fox Hunters. I'm adamant this will go off favourite. So if you're, yeah. if you're tempted to back him, you've got to get on him now. He'll, he'll be smashed up, I reckon. Yeah. I think you think uh, Derek O'Connor will ride him as well, I think. Yep, he's been booked. That's it, then. I'm happy with that. <laughs> who, who was the other one? Was it Billaway? Uh, it wasn't, no. <laughs> oh, who's the other one? Uh, Shantou Flyer. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I love Shantou Flyer. Yeah. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this horse. Um, He's, he's Cheltenham form. He's exceptional. Um, he's got form figures of 1, uh, F, 1, 4, 2, 2, 2, 2. Um, he's become second at the festival for the last two years. He, he deserves a change of look. Um, I know that David Ma Maxwell's um, going to ride him, which many probably wouldn't like to see. But he did ride him last year, didn't he? He probably didn't ride him closer to the pace as he should have, to be honest. Cause... Yeah, I agree. And do you know what? David Maxwell, full credit to him, because he's living the dream. We all talk about maybe owning a horse, doing that sort of stuff. He's buying them for stupid amounts of money and riding them. If he could have that ride back from last year, 100% what you said there, he would have been closer to the pace. He's got another year's experience. He's finally had a Cheltenham race course winner. He's coming in here, with, although he's a year old, he's coming in here with a proper chance, I think. Yeah, 100%, yeah. So there we go, completed it. Fox Hunters forecast. Right, I'm going to, do you know what? I'm going to get some money on Staker Wallace because I'm, I'm, a few people have been talking about him and I've watched his point to point back as well. He's going to get some, he's going to go off fab. Whether he wins or not, I don't know, but he's going to get smashed up, I think. Shantou Flyer will stay around about the same price, I reckon, because everyone's anti David Maxwell, aren't they? Well, all lots of people are. So <laughs> we've got the last two races. I do feel like it peaks at obviously the Gold Cup and then after that it falls by the wayside. I'm not that interested in the Fox Hunters, although I watch it. Then by the time it gets through to the Grand Daniel and the Martin Pike, there has been years where I've almost lost interest with it after yeah. a four-day slog, which I feel really bad with. The last few years, I've given it more attention. Jamie Wren told us that he fancied List well early in the season for this, so that was a fair shout. But how do you see it? Anyone you like? Um, yeah, and I, I really like Greatfield, who's recently joined John John O'Neill. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? R yeah, really interesting. It, he was a former top-class two mile. I mean... When he was with William Williams, I absolutely love this horse. He used yep. to just go off like a, a complete nutcase and yep. belt every fence, uh, nearly throw all the jockeys on the floor and all kinds of things. But um, he, he could be well and, and he capped off 155. Um, it's interesting that he, he's put straight into this for, from since joining John Joe O'Neill with a uh, prep run elsewhere. If he gets into a good rhythm up front, it, it could be hard to catch. Yeah, I... to form. And I, you know, I pitched him as a horse, well, not like publicly, but I spoke to a few friends in like a smaller circle. I, I genuinely thought he could end up being a champion chaser. Like, I actually thought he would have a genuine chance of winning a champion chase. And this is around about the same time when Duvan Alter and all those sort of people have been, have been running. He was yeah. in the um, county hurdle, wasn't it? I think that the year that Superb Story won when he went for Dan Skelton um, and he was joint fab that day and he was pants around Cheltenham yeah that was always my only slight niggle with him in terms of being a champion chaser but yeah I'm glad you've given him a mention because he's more than interested in any on stable debut yeah I mean to be, to be honest the only the only way you to ride this horse is to ride him from 
go you gotta go forward with him. And just hold on and hope he That's doesn't it, yeah. too hard. <laughs> you, is there anyone else? Or just um, Yeah, I'll, I'll give a mention to Usman then. Um back at two miles at Cheltenham. Um he's shown his best form over this trip. I mean, since he stepped up in trip them but they did make a pretty bad mess of him to be honest. He's yeah. going, went downhill completely. Yeah. But he never looked like he wanted to step up, did he? He, he hated it, completely hated every single run over that trip. Um, but back down to two miles uh, and dropped a few pounds. Um, I, I, I wouldn't dismiss him. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been in no sort of form at all, has he? But I'll tell you what's interesting. As I say, I quickly glanced at the exchange prices just to get an idea of where these horses might be going. And you'd want to double check it because odds checkers not always right up to date. But you can get 33 to 1, us and them. Again, bet 365, non one no bet, best odds guaranteed. 25 years on the exchange. So either one of these horses, again, when he gets confirmed and he runs, a few people will put him up. He'll halve in price, will he? <clears throat> that's another tenner you just made me put on. That's the problem. <laughs> so that's it for the Grand Daniel? Um, yeah, that's, that's the only two I have, yeah. Beautiful. There's only so many tenors that I've got. <laughs> We're going to move on to the last race of Cheltenham. The 28 races are nearly over. It's the Martin Pipe Handicap Hurdle. There's a, there's, a, well, there's a few in here that I've backed. I would be pretty confident that with the few that I've backed, I'm, I've got the winners already sewn up. Um, the only one that worries me slightly is Downtown Getaway, if he decided to come here. I'm not sure where he's going to go, but he would worry me slightly. I think they were talking Coral Cup. But how do you see it? Who do you think wins it, mate? Um, I, I like uh, Joseph O'Brien's couple of runners. Um, Run. ones any anything will do. Um, oh. I think that's quite a big price. Uh, the last time I checked. Um, I'm having to scroll down, so it must be. <laughs> yeah. So again, on the exchanges, it looks like it's coming here. You can get thirty-three to one, non-one and no bet, Paddy Bauer. That's not too bad at all. <laughs> nice. Why do you like him, mate? Um, it's never finished out the first three in all eight starts. Um, finished third in the grade two. Um, I think th this race w will suit it perfectly. Um, I think he's going to go off much shorter than his current price. And I know Joe Svoboyan's been quite keen on him for this race for, for quite a while. Um, and then yeah. his, his other one, uh, Entoukas. Yeah. Um, Previously chased down the likes of Classical Dream and Envoy Allen. Um, deservedly got off the mark last time comfortably. Um, he, he's another one that could um, kick on there. He's got his head in front finally. Yeah, that's it. I like it. The thing with Joseph O'Brien runners is that Oakley Browns, because it's the boys race in it, the conditional jockeys, whoever Oakley Brown ride would be the one you'd fancy being their most likely winner. I'm hoping he's going to ride front view. Anything will do is an interesting one for you to mention, though, because I did put him up when he made his race course debut, just because of the breeding, uh, the same dam as Stand Up and Fight, the JP horse that's been quite quietly fancy for some fox hunting over the last couple of years, and it popped up at 16s on debut. So, I, you know what, I sort of lost him off my radar. I thought he might have gone a bit too high, so I might watch some of his races back, but he's definitely interesting. Jockey bookings will talk volumes in this as well. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how they go. Yeah, I know. But I like it because, like I say, I've got it already set up that hopefully Browns will be on there. Joseph O'Brien's got plenty of jockeys that he can put in there. And obviously all the other ones that keep getting mentioned, I like the way you're thinking, Colin Fire, I've mentioned Pylon. They're all too short now. Again, we touched on it at the start of the show that they're all well found in the market. So you peeling out these ones at big prices, I love it, mate. And I'm definitely going to build up a few block bets for them. So thank you very much for your time this evening, mate. I will come oh, for you to sort out the write-ups for Cheltenham. We're going to smash the pace pools, surely, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay, so we'll smash be minting park. We'll be smashed it. We'll smash in that, and then we'll be minting one way or the other. And I've got to go put a few tenors on now before I publish this and the Bryces go. That's it, mate. <laughs> All right, so thanks again, mate, and I'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, thank you, mate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thanks for your time. Have a good evening, buddy.